Welcome, Pitt fans, to another episode of Talking College Football with J.J. Kitchen. Of course, I'm your host, J.J. Kitchen, and today we've got a special one. Another one, the second official episode of the Whippeo City League Spotlight, a hometown hero story. And today we have a guest on that is a leader, number one, a great individual, a guy that committed to Pitt out of high school, has been through been through thick and thin, been at Pitt the entire time, and a guy that's going to be a very important part for this year, and especially on the offensive line, and that's senior Blake Zubovic. How you doing, brother? Doing great. Hey, good to see you. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, No problem, brother, man. I can't can't thank you enough for coming on, and I know you guys are extremely busy. You know, I know Jake talked about, you know, it's like the downtime a little bit to where you guys compared to what you do during the season, but you know, you guys are still really busy, especially in the off season with your training program. Talk about it. You know, how how's the training program going? I know Coach Stack is the man. You guys have been putting up numbers, I've heard. You know, Marcus Miner was just doing some crazy stuff with his trainer, Terry, getting ready for the uh, for the combine. I mean, especially pro day. Talk about what it's been like so far in the off season as you develop this new team of what you guys are going into. For sure. Well, first off, Marcus looks great, man. He looks like he lost some weight. He's moving, you know. I saw them pull up, see so he looks good. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's been really nice. This cradle kind of hit on. It's it's kind of lax right now, you know. I mean, we got kind of, you know, little workouts in the morning, just five days a week. And uh, me and uh, some of the other guys, cradle included, Branson Taylor, Matt Goncaz, Ryan Bear, uh, we've been trying to do some extra work because this is the time we kind of get to just, you know, work on stuff we see, you know try to like, you know, work on stuff like NFL videos, different videos we get from uh, guys like Carter Warren and stuff, try to work on some drills. Uh, But it's kind of nice. This is kind of our downtime, just getting bigger, faster, stronger, like you said. Uh, Weight room's been great. Uh, Stack's awesome. I mean, we all love working for him. He's a great guy and a heck of a strength coach, you know. Been doing a lot of discipline stuff lately, trying to get us, you know, locked in, you know, getting ready for the season. So uh, it's been really good. But uh, Kind of nice to take a step back, able to focus on classes and stuff. So, uh, pretty nice so far. Uh, pretty successful offseason, I'd say, at this point. And I, I think it's always good to talk about it, you know, especially as a student athlete. You know, people talk about, you know, the, the offseason program and the working out. But the fact it is you guys are still student athletes. You know, you guys have class every single day. You guys do the workouts in the morning every single day. But one of the things that I, I really talk about with Pitt fans, and a lot of them don't understand this, is the extra film study that you guys do. You guys talk about different types of, uh, whether it's workouts or drills that you can do. You guys watch tape from the previous season. Talk about what that really means and the leadership role that you, Jake, guys like that, to where you guys are the veterans of the group and you're really teaching, especially these young guys as they come along, Talk about some of that stuff when you guys are watching tape, how important that is going into this season and why it's such an intrigual part of who you guys are. For sure. Uh, well, the only way you can get better is by watching yourself and watching others that you strive to be like. You know, So we watch a lot of NFL guys as well, like I said. We watch a lot of uh, other, even other college teams, you know, stuff, schemes, you know, different techniques that guys are using that have been successful. We'll try to you know, maybe replicate them. But, yeah, watching ourselves, I mean, we've gone through – uh, every game from last season multiple times by now, uh, just in this off season, it's important. It's important to bring the young, the young guys like along with you. Cause if you don't like me and cradle, we understand what's going on. You know, some of the other guys, Matt Goncavs, you know, he understands what's going on, but it's really important to get, you know, the Ryan bears, the, uh, Terrence, Enos, Terrence Moore's, those type of guys with you when you do that type of stuff, because that's, you know, that's how you come forward. I mean, I had a great group of seniors, uh, honestly, the last couple of years and uh, like the Jimmy Morrissey's, even like the Marcuses and stuff to, to learn behind and just have multiple opinions. Because at this point, me and Cradle, you know, we've been with Borb so much and a great line coach that we really understand like what's going on. And a lot of these guys are really way ahead of where they should be for their age. Like Branson Taylor, uh, pretty, pretty young guy in the scheme of things. And uh you know, he, he is really far along. Like he, he's like up at our level and it's like really cool to see like guys develop quicker than you're supposed to because of the time put in and the time with the other seniors and stuff. Uh, it's just like trying to pay it back because me and Cradle got it when we were young and just trying to help guys get ready for their, you know, once their time because it's everyone's time at some point. And uh, 
the more prepared, the more early, the better chance everyone has. This team has and every individual has in the line room. And it's funny you, you talk about that. And one of the things that you really hit on there that I, that I love to hear, and it seems to be like the, the pit motto is, you know, give it back. I had seniors like this. It's, it's truly the leadership of what you guys show on a daily basis. It's like the Brian O'Neills, the Dorian Johnsons, Adam Biznawadi. I mean, those guys were back in the day where, you know, you got to look at like five, six, seven years ago. But all of a sudden, you guys are doing the same thing. You guys are developing more guys. And when you look at someone like yourself, you know, you've been an absolute player at the position where, you know, you it doesn't matter what point in the game, if, if someone's down with an injury, you come in, it's not a big it's not a big adjustment. It doesn't even look like it to you. And then you're out there as a starter for the rest of the season. Talk about during the offseason, you guys are watching tape. You're now going into year two of the Frank Signetti offense. And talk about how year two, is it easier going into year two because you know what you're looking for? You know what the scheme looks like. It's almost like familiarity. And now you're able to kind of teach it to the young guys. Talk about what that means going into year two of this offense and how it can be easier for you guys. Uh, it's definitely going to be easier because, um, you know, any any time you bring in a new offense coordinator, no matter how great the scheme there's going to be trial and error and we only get reps against our defense. And as you know, our defense is kind of funky, man. Like we get, we give some really weird looks to teams that we don't get those looks against other teams. Mm -hmm. So the amount of adjustments and calls and schemes that we've made, uh, the coaching staffs made, the O-lines made, um, you know, in the last year, you know, last season have been like, it's unbelievable. Like we've come such a long way and you can see it in our progression throughout the season, you know, making less mistakes, uh, just, just look like a more cohesive unit. And I think by, like I said, like rewatching that film and restudying and, you know, now with everyone having more familiarity, we're able to make better calls, be more efficient and be more like mentally ready for every game. So I'm really excited for this year. Cause it's, like I said, it's always there's always growing pains. Like it just it's just how it is. Like you know, you got a whole new scheme to learn. It was obviously very different than a uh, year before. We went from you know spread to uh, to ground and pound for a large amount, and uh, both schemes work. It's just a matter of adjusting the players, adjusting the mindset, and um, you know, eventually, like I said, at the end of the season, I think you saw some of that progress come a long way. Yeah, I was gonna say towards the, especially towards the end of the year. You know, it, it was almost like you guys were starting to click at, at a high level. I mean, you guys were starting to do whatever the hell you wanted. I think Miami was a real proof of that when you're when you're putting up big numbers like that. And you talk, you know, the, the funny thing is everybody always talks about, well, Miami has Pitt's number during these years and, and Pitt upset them, at, obviously, at home and when Kenny Pickett's freshman year. You know, it was really good to see you guys take that next step against a team like that that's supposed to be, you know, they get a new coach. They have a brand new offense, brand new defense. Everything they're projected to win the coastal. You know, the, the first year, which is ludicrous to say the least. If if anybody understands football, you know, you're not going to walk in there and win the division your first year, especially too with all the changes that you're making. Mm -hmm. But the the last question before I go back to really your history, you know, the hometown hero portion of it. Talk about what Coach Borbs means to you guys. I mean, you know, I was at the National Letter of Intent event. I go to that every year, and I always love, you know, obviously Charlie Partridge is my guy. That's that's one guy I always love to see. I mean, he's an incredible individual and leader. And one person I always talk to is Coach Borbs. And one of the things he always says about you guys is is how hard you guys work, who you are as character, as men developed, as, as, as young guys, to where you are now as seniors – it's, it's incredible to watch, he talked about, how it's so cool to see you guys grow up as men. But he talked about how your leadership, you, Jake, it, from the top down, talk about how you know you guys have learned from him what he's done for you, but you guys kind of coach yourselves, and he talks about that because of the trust level you guys have with him. Talk about what Coach Borbs means to you guys. Uh, Coach Borbs is one of the most knowledgeable people I've ever been around. Uh in the football world, you know, just, you know, unbelievable amount of knowledge over his years. And the one thing about Borbs is he keeps everything very simple. And I think that's why it works. Like his motto is like, you know, it worked in, you know, 1980, 1990, 2000, 2010. It's going to work now. And I think bringing that mindset kind of allows for a quick learning process. And then the other part I want to hit on is uh, in terms of the family and the trust that we built with him, it's because of the guys they brought in. I mean, 
since I've been here and the board, the guys boards have brought in uh, from my class on, especially um, including honestly the super seniors last year, but just, uh, you know, a lot of his guys, he's brought in guys that are absolutely like ready to learn, like ready to work, like really, they just fit. They fit in the culture. They want to be good. They want to help others. And, and it just kind of works. It, it's this trust that's built off of, hey, I know you want to get better and you know I want to get better and we're going to do this together so we can be the most successful unit we can because, you know, O-line is just one person. It really is. It's five people working as one, just a cohesive unit. So if you're not on that same page and you don't have that trust with your coach, you know, on the sideline when you're making adjustments and just within your room, you know, like you said, guys go down, like for, for guys to step in, like they have to have that same cohesive bond that the starters have uh, just being a backup. So it, it's important that, you know, we always do stuff together. The O-line room's super close. And I think that's a big part of the reason that we've, you know, had trust uh, in a room and had success over the last couple of years, for sure. And that's great to hear too. And, and it's it's been noted through everybody about how close you guys are in the people. Okay. And it kind of wraps me back. And we're going to go a little bit of a wrinkle in time here. Think about this, you know, I remember when you committed to Pitt and a lot of times it comes down to people relationships and, you know, like, let's be honest, you were a guy that you had offers from everywhere, buddy. I mean, whether it was Pitt, Penn state, Boston college, Michigan state, West Virginia, Virginia tech, Purdue, you could have gone anywhere in the country. Okay. And numerous and in, in between multiple, I'm not a star rankings guy, but from number, a number of different star ranking companies, I mean, hell, you were a four-star recruit. Talk about what it really meant. You know, it was being a hometown hero something that was important to you. What really stood out about Pitt from these other schools that you said, man, I, I want to go to the place where, you know, Bill Freilich played offensive line at? Well, yeah, you just you just started me off right there. I mean, unbelievable O-line tradition. It's it's really hard between coaches, coaches like Joe Moore and players like Bill Freilich, Mark May, you know, these guys – it's in Russ Grimm. It, these guys are that you don't find this collection of offensive linemen anywhere else. Like this is like not common to have this level of tradition and coaching in the O line room. So that's definitely number one. Uh, number two, uh, great business school. So I wanted to, you know, I wanted to get, a, I knew I wanted to get a business degree, and uh, obviously it's a great school for that. It's one of the best, you know, universities anywhere on the East Coast. And then thirdly, and most importantly, I always knew I wanted to come to Pitt because I've always been a Pitt guy my whole life. I mean, I, I've i been coming to Pitt games since I was – I can before I can even remember. I mean, me and my family are just Pitt fans through and through, even though I'm like the same distance from Pitt to West Virginia down in Mount Vernon. But uh, we've always been Pitt fans. And, you know, I visit other places because I wanted to see – I wanted to, you know, just, you know, not cross off all my options because, you, like you said, like – there's a lot of options and it's a lot and people tell you things. So you want to go and see, but I, I always knew I was going to commit to Pitt because it's just like, it's where I felt like I was at home. Uh, I felt like it's kind of, you know, I kind of hit on this when I committed, like it's, it's kind of like uh, it almost feels like a, not a duty. I don't want to say it in a negative sense, but like, it's like where you're supposed to be at. Like that's, that's like, what's right. You see guys like, you know, Bill Freilich from Penn Hills, like Aaron Donald from Penn Hills, like, guys from the Whitby go to Pitt and are successful when they're part of the team success. And that's kind of what I wanted. And I also, you know, had a really good relationship with the coaches, um, but it just boiled down to the fact that Pitt felt like home to me from the people, you know, to the location. Uh, it was just, Pitt was it for me. You know, it's, it's really cool to hear you talk about how you were a Pitt fan as a young kid. And, you know, you hear that from a number of different players and, you know, they, they go through the recruiting process and they look around and they, and they kind of think about, you know, maybe it's, you know, I, I ought to think about going somewhere else, you know, to hear you talk about how it was it, it, in your heart. It was like it was the place to be, you know, people talk about home and, they, and, and there's multiple different definitions of how you can classify home, where it's location. Is it weather? Is it people? X, Y and Z. You looked at it from a number of different things and talking about it right there, the, the people. You know, you're just the, you're the same distance. You, know, you you come from a great high school in Bell Vernon. You come from a great high school. You're the same distance from Pitt to West Virginia. You know, the backyard brawl. You know, talk about when you went. You know, and, and you decided to go to Pitt. You know, 
one of the things, especially too, you know, did you know you were going to have the opportunity to, to, to even get on the field early? And when you look at it, you know, you're a guy, you can play multiple positions. You've been a, a force, whether it's, you know, it doesn't matter what you're asked to do. You, you're able to do whatever needs to get done to help the team win. Talk about what it's been like since you've gotten to Pitt and having the ability to just just be that guy that you're Mr. Reliable. It doesn't matter what time of day. It doesn't matter where you are, what position. You're a guy that performs at a high level. Talk about what that's like, being able to perform at a high level when your number's called. Yeah, for sure. I mean, absolutely. Um, I knew I knew it was going to be hard to play early here. Uh, we had a lot of guys in front of me. I mean, when I came in, it was one of the biggest line rooms we've ever had. <laughs> a lot of talented guys, as you know. I mean, how many guys have been all conference and drafted and signed since I've been in, you know, the program? Uh, so I knew it was going to be a long process, and you know that gets hard sometimes. But you know, when my moment came, I knew I was going to be ready. That, that's basically what it came down to. Uh, Whenever that was going to be, you know, thrown in here, thrown in there, I'm going to play all the positions I can to get on the field and help this team because, you know, that's what that's what matters. And O-line really have a team first mentality. I don't know what it is, but that's just kind of the way O-linemen are built. We really just, you know, we want to see the unit succeed, the team succeed, because we know that's how each individual succeeds. So, you know, being able to come in and just play as many positions as I could. I actually came in, I, I played tackle originally. Um and then I got switched to guard my second year, and I did feel more comfortable there. But then, you know, playing like center in the AC championship, playing guard, and just like, you know, starting in Death Valley was my second start. Like that stuff was crazy, but I knew I was going to be as ready as I possibly could. Am I as good as I am now? Like, was I as good as I am then as I am now? No, but I knew that at that moment I was going to be as mentally and physically ready as I could to play because the other four, the other four guys in the O line, the other 11 on my unit, on the you know whole offense depended on me and i didn't want to be that guy to let everyone down so whatever it took i wanted to be comfortable and i wanted to play up to the expectation of a pit offense lineman and you talk about the expectations and one of the things i always loved what borbs talked about especially during camp he mentioned you on a, a number of bases because when you think about offensive linemen you need depth and you guys certainly have it. But one of the things that Borb talked about with you is he basically said, look, this is a guy, you know what, we need to create a position, an extra, we need an extra, we need a 12th guy because this guy's so good, we need to get him on the field. It just, we have so many guys. Talk about what it was like that, you know, you go in this season and you play lights out. Talk about how, you know, especially, you know, Carter Warren goes down. Owen Drexel goes down. How did you guys find a way to just plug and play and really just keep it together and how that group is so collectively good together? It doesn't matter who's thrown in that offensive line during the game. For sure. Well, uh, the one and two deep especially uh, are extremely close units. Um, uh, Coach Borbs does a good job of this actually during camp especially, really mixing up the groups and creating competition. So not only are you pushing the guy ahead of you, even if it's – you know, a guy that, you know, is probably not going to sit, you know, they make them, he makes them feel uncomfortable so that they strive to get better. But by doing that gives uh, ones and twos reps with everyone. So I've played a lot of reps next to everyone on that O-line. So from a physical standpoint, I feel comfortable. I know what I'm going to get out of this guy. Like Owen and Jake were very different centers, but I knew how to play with each of them because even before my first game, I played with both of them several times just in practice. So from a physical aspect, it's that. And from a, um, a mental aspect, it's just like I said, uh, really close group. I mean, you know, the locker room, you know, things like that, just hanging out outside. You know, we always ha all hang out after games. Like it's really like those are my friends on the team. Like those are, you know, like the Matt Goncavs, the Jake Cradle. Those guys are my close friends. And uh, so you kind of you kind of just know people and you you understand that their body language and um to be able to plug and play people really comes down to how comfortable you are with that person, both on and off the field. And I, and again, I love how you talk about just how collectively close you guys are. And one of the things that's just going through college football in this day and age, that's just very different than what it is before is the transfer portal. They're having their guys, they, they go, they, they come to different places um, if they're not playing their freshman year, even though they can't, they're, they're definitely not good enough to play. They're transferring. Talk about what it, you know, what it means to be at Pitt 
well, you committed to Pitt and you've been there the entire time. Talk about your leadership. And I know you're not one to just gloat about yourself, but you know the, the reality is is that guys like you, like Jay Cradle, like Mac Gonsalves, it, it's it, it's hard to find those guys that are true leaders that stay with the program no matter what. Talk about what that's like and just, you know, is, is it really the, the collective group or because you guys are close together? Is it because of the canvas? Is it just because of, in your heart, you know, hey, I'm getting I'm going to be getting a lot of playing time here. Just talk about what that's like in your decision making. Man, like never once I even think about transferring. It's crazy to see all this transfers going on. Uh, well, for me, um, you know, I think it's I think transport. I mean, I got my own opinions. I think for freshmen, it's kind of dangerous because, like you said, Guys come in, they're not, you know, given what they're promised. That's the time when you get down on yourself because it's understandable. Like certain places like do promise a lot. And uh, some places it just kind of seems brighter. And you, you're you like you're the guy in high school. You think you're going to come in and start and you're just not ready. Like it's just the truth. Uh, but anyway, I think moving forward, being able to stay uh, is kind of second nature because the gra- you realize as you mature, like the grass isn't always greener and you see yourself progress. So the combination of seeing yourself, like when I realized, like if I were to watch myself, which I do time to time, like my freshman, sophomore year, like the, the you know, strides I've made, like you realize how like you really weren't ready, even if in your mind and in your heart, you thought you were. And like I said, the grass isn't always greener, everyone. It's, it's you know, it's everywhere. Everywhere has its ups and downs, but you, you kind of just ride with, you know, what you're comfortable with. And being a pit, you know, I, I've developed really good friendships while I'm here. So I think, number one, uh, relationships uh, with my coaches, especially. Uh, I have great relationships with all my coaches. And I've, like, made some of my best friends here. Like, guys are going to be my wedding one day. And it's, you know, you, you just have to commit. I think one thing that's lost today, and, you know, in all aspects of life, just not just football, is loyalty and commitment. I think a lot of people lack loyalty and commitment. Like when I said I was committing here, I was committing here. I wasn't decommitting. And I'm going to stay here as long as that needs to be because I committed to Pitt and I'm going to give them everything I have because they've helped me as well. Like it's, uh, you know, you go back and forth. It's You have to commit to something and be loyal to it. And I think that's just something that, you know, and, and sometimes there is situations where the transfer portal is, you know, the right decision for a guy. I'm not knocking every guy who's ever transferred. Mm-hmm. There, there's there's decisions that make sense given certain circumstances, but under regular circumstances, for the most part, you know, I think loyalty is a big part in, you know, being able to not really even think about having to stay, but just know it's the right thing to do. I can tell you this, Blake, you know, Pitt fans would agree with me. One, they're going to love to hear that. Okay. It's, it's, you know, you are definitely a Narduzzi guy, which is awesome, which is why we love you, which is why we love our guy, Coach Deuce. You were successful yesterday. You were successful today. You will be successful in the future because you understand that. And I think that as Pitt fans, they're going to be able to just recognize that. And they're going to hear that like, man, like this is, you know, this is why we love Pitt. And it's different. It, it, it truly is just different. And, you know, when you talk about the collective group, I would be remiss if I didn't ask it because it has to, it's just, it's a question that Pitt fans ever, just, I got to ask it to every player. You talk about the team, the collectiveness. What was it like when you guys were in the tunnel in Akershire Stadium, first game of the year, it's the backyard brawl, the renewal. What was that like being the first team in over a decade facing the West Virginia Mountaineers and then winning? What was that like? Man, well, to start off for me personally, it was unbelievable because uh, when I was younger, uh, I really didn't have a big part in, um, you know, like the Penn State games. Mm-hmm. And uh, But man, like watching, I've been to two or three backyard brawls in my life before this. And it was honestly, I had that circled on my calendar since I, uh, you know, was like just getting like recruited here. Mm-hmm. It was unbelievable if i'd be i'd be totally lying to you if i said i did not know what happened in that tunnel i was just like <laughs> i was so <laughs> locked in i was so unbelievably tunnel vision i was so pumped up and i know you know coach stack and you know all the coaches did such a good job for the guys who aren't from the city or the whitfield to to make them understand the importance of this rivalry i think everyone even the kids like from florida really understood 
by the time this came around how important this was just based off you know the coaches and you know coach deck incorporates country roads and in our you know workouts and stuff and like <laughs> really you start to understand the magnitude and for you know especially us pittsburgh guys man it was unbelievable there was there's no feeling like it i mean actually like you said absolutely jam-packed that was the most crowded game i think i've ever you know <laughs> i've ever played out of pit so uh at least at Acrisure Stadium, but um, wow, unbelievable feeling and unbelievable experience to have. And honestly, I can't wait for to play down there this year because I know that's just going to be just as crazy. I was going to say, you know, my next question is, man, you're going down to Morgantown now. You've seen the videos, you know, 13-9, Dave Wanstead, Pat Bostic, obviously Pat Bostic working for Pitt now. Man, it, it's it's got to be something special, you know, and it's I think it's different when you, when you grow up a Pitt fan. You understand that. And, you know, I'll get into it a little bit more and, and ask your thoughts on it, but it's just different when you come from Pittsburgh. It's, it's different. It's not – football's not the same here as it is in Georgia, as it is in North Dakota, as it is in Ohio. You know, uh, p- football in Pittsburgh's different. You know, I mean, hell, I mean, you'll be in a grocery store somewhere, and if someone knows you're playing on a Friday night, they're going to tell you you missed a block on something or you should have blitzed here. It, it, it's just different here. You know, talk about – when you know you talk about those games and the memories that you've had growing up, if a Whippeal kid or a City League kid was looking at Pitt and they've heard both sides of everything, they've heard Penn State talking to them, they've heard West Virginia talking to them, they've heard other schools talking to them about why they shouldn't go to Pitt. As a guy that's been there at Pitt now for how many years, talk about why that guy – should really embrace being a hometown hero and going to Pitt and what it means the 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 what it means to have that on your shoulders to represent your hometown. Why should that guy go to Pitt? Well, like you said, I think Pitt kind of resembles the Whippeal. Um, I think the reason that it's so big, football in this area, high school, college, all of that, is because, you know, this may sound weird, but I feel like it's kind of like all we got. Like that's kind of like always been our focus is football, 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 football. And it's huge. I mean, from all the players, from all the legacies going to Pitt, like it's it's one of the most special traditions absolutely anywhere in the country for any, you know, small area, I guess, collection of counties around the city. Um, you you see, like I said, guys like Bill Fraley, guys like Aaron Donald, and, you know, they play in the whip deal and they succeed and then they move on to play at Pitt. And it just has to mean something more to you, like you said. And if it doesn't, it's it's just like it's hard to put into words, truthfully, because it's just something you grow up doing. You grow up knowing how important football is. Like this is like the like around like this area is like classic America, American football towns. This is where people grow up. They play football from the time they're five years old. It's like you said, they're an old men in the coffee shop talk, talking about football all day long. Yep. It's and, and that carries on to Pitt. Those same fans of Whippeal are fans of Pitt. And that that same idea carries on. It's just like this old time, traditional blue collar, absolutely built around the city. Like he's like, that's another big part of it is how blue collar the city is. That's I mean, football, man, it's it's blue collar chip on your shoulder. You know, our, our you know, Narduzzi's biggest message every game we play is we're going to be the most physical team. This team's played all year because that's the type of guys we are. Cause that's where we're from. We're from Pittsburgh and we're tough and we're blue collar and it means something to play football because football means something here. And it's, you know, I love how you talk about, you know, it's, it's, it's really, it's really all we got. And it's, it's the work and we're from Pittsburgh. It's tough. You know, Charlie Partridge said that in the national letter of intent event in front of a bunch, I mean, how many hundreds of fans at Acture stadium a couple weeks ago on February 1st, and the first thing he said is before he even introduced some of the players or the recruits that he brought in on the defensive line, the first thing he said is, you know, we, we love work. We, we, you know, we embrace work. And we want guys that want to work and put that time in, that love to develop, love to ask questions, want to learn. But more importantly, and what I really think's changed in the past 10 years, to be quite honest with you, is that winning. You know, everyone always talked about, you know, it, it, you know, we're going there for an education because Pitt's been a great place for education forever. You know, it's been, it's been that. It's been that basketball school. 
Pitt basketball making a huge comeback now, especially in this past in this past year. But you look at it, you know, twenty wins in in two years. You guys are the first team, the first real team to do that since 1981-1982. You know, talk about that a little bit about you know you know when when those when those recruits are looking at Pitt and you're telling them it's it's a special thing to come here. Talk about the success that you guys have had, but more importantly, the mentality that you guys have. That, that, that you, know, you know, you had nine wins this year, but it's not enough. And you guys are, you guys, you know, you've won an ACC championship game. You're, you're the first guy that's won a national, has won a championship for Pitt in years. Talk about what it's like that you guys truly embrace that it's not enough. You guys want to win it all. Talk about why winning is important to you guys, especially at Pitt. Absolutely. And those two things, you know, the one to win and winning, like you said, they correlate directly. Absolute positive correlation because um, we want guys to come here that have the same mindset because it can never be enough. That was great. I mean, being part of that history was amazing. Like it was it's really cool. It's something I'll always take with me. But that doesn't mean this year we want to have a six win season. Like you said, we want to be back in the AC championship. We want to be back in that national championship that we felt like two years ago, you know, we really let slip through our fingers and uh, that's, that's not that feeling sticks with you. When you, when you have groups of guys like we have on this team, you want to achieve that top level. And even then it's not enough. Um, and guys that we bring in, I think that, like I said, the coaches have done a great job of recruiting guys like this, guys that aren't satisfied with, you know, clocking out early guys who are willing to put in the work, willing to stay the extra time, you know, you know, we don't always have, you know, the highest recruits or whatever like that, but the development of our players based on what they want out of their career is what has taken us that next step and will take us that next step after this. And uh, you want to pass on that drive to the younger kids uh, and then you want them to redo it back, like repay it back. Like I spoke earlier, like it's important that you're never satisfied. And that's another thing that Coach Stack always preaches to us. I mean, almost every workout, he reminds us like how bad those losses hurt and how how you don't want that feeling. You don't want your season ruined by one bad game. You came out slow, they jumped on top of you and you couldn't crawl your way back. That type of stuff can't happen. And, you know, now it's gone from just getting from a bowl game to, you know, this imaginary ACE championship. I mean, when I got there, I thought I felt like like winning the ACC championship was like uh, like we broke down ACC championships. I don't think anyone believed it. I don't think anyone did. Mm-hmm. I just think it's like it was like this mystical like event that doesn't happen at Pitt anymore. Uh, and it well, it never not ACC, but uh, winning a conference championship. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think over time, players and coaches have developed that mindset that okay, a bowl game isn't enough. Okay, the AC championship isn't enough. Okay, a New Year's Six Bowl win isn't enough. You know what I mean? Like, you have to keep increasing that level and increasing that, increasing that pedestal for, you know, people to stand on your shoulders and you to stand on other shoulders to get pit to where it should be and where it can be. So. You, know, you know, it's funny. You, you bring that up, and it's, it's crazy because you and Cradle really have described it in the same exact way, which is incredible, which – Tells you all you need to know about the offensive line room and just the honest truth about it. You guys don't. You guys don't hold back. It's the truth. You thought about it as you know when you broke down AC championship game. You guys didn't believe it. And I remember when Cradle talked about how you know Cal Adamitis after a practice, you know, brought everybody up and said, you know what, we're we're, we're breaking down ACC champs for a reason. Let's let's actually believe this. Let's actually do this. And it's funny that you know you, to hear you talk about it as well. To go from, you know, it just doesn't happen here anymore to you got the guys, the right guys in there, winners, captains, leaders, understanding that, you know what, this isn't enough anymore. It's not enough. You know, we're going to get back to the AC championship game again. We're going to get back and now we're going to win our conference and we're going to get to the college football playoff. And I think that, you know, it's maybe not said enough, but I think Pitt fans really enjoy that. You know, it's, it's been decades since that kind of talk has ever been around, and it's obviously different because of you guys. You guys put in the work, the daily work, consistently every single day. You know, it's not a, it's not something that's in the air anymore. You guys are, are part of history. You guys have won an ACC championship game. You guys have put Pitt back in the national spotlight. Pitt Athletics is in a completely different place than when it was when, you know, as I call him, Todd the Fraud, Todd the Fraud Graham was here. You know, 
it's a whole different world. What Pitt Athletics is now because of the hard work that you guys did. Not not uh, not us fans, not us, not, not media, nothing. You guys did, and it kind of proves that again. You know, when you guys beat UCLA in the bowl game, number eighteen, U at UCLA. You know, you guys are missing 10, 11, 12 guys. People talking about well, this is great to get young guys in there. This will be good to see if they had a win. It's it's no big deal, whatever. Th- that wasn't an option for you guys. You guys go out there and play a physical game for a legend, a guy that I think is truly respected, and I think you'll talk about a little bit here is Nick Patty. You know, you guys played your hearts out for that guy who, you know, he doesn't get hurt against Michigan State. You guys throttle Michigan State in the Peach Bowl. That's a fact. You know, I don't care. I, I had Michigan State fans arguing with me about that. It's okay. It's, it's that's why they suck this year. <laughs> but the the point is, talk about you know, and especially just a couple more questions. Just talk about what it was like to win that last game for Nick Patty and, and, and just how close you guys are just together. Absolutely. Uh, me and Patty, uh, you know, really close. Uh, Cradles actually lived with him every year in Pitt. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if you knew that, but um, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, a really good kid, man. I mean, I came in with him and, you know, from day one, we've been good friends. Uh, he's another guy, man, that, you know, he stuck it out. You know, he he waited for his turns. And when he had to get plugged in, you know, I kind of compare my career a little bit to Nick's. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he had to be plugged in, he came out and he performed. And I think there's a lot of, you know, honor and, like I said, commitment in that because it takes like a really, especially the quarterback position, it takes like a strong will to be like, nope, I'm just going to like stick it out and wait for my time. And I'm really happy that we could help him get that moment because he deserved it. I mean, everyone in that locker room, everyone in that huddle on the field and uh, down in El Paso, uh, we believed in him. And the first thing he said to us when he came in the huddle, he said, listen, guys, let's have fun today. If you make a mistake, I'll, you know, I'll fix it for you. We'll get it figured out. And that's just like that's the type of guy he is. You know, that's the type of guy that we want to pit. And uh, it's really it, it's kind of you play for him instead of to play in front of him, I guess is to yeah. say as an offensive lineman, when you have a guy like, you know, that you really believe in, you truly want to succeed for them. And I'm really happy we could deliver that moment for him because he deserved it. And uh, yeah, he, he played a heck of a game. Uh, it was really good to see. And uh, yeah, uh, Patty, Patty's been a great guy. Uh, my entire pick career, like I said, uh, it's it's just crazy to think that he's he's you know already passed the program like it just feels like yesterday that yeah. uh, we're coming and moving up in Sutherland you know yeah um, but really cool and really cool to see his development uh, and a lot of guys development mentally and physically throughout the years they're here so pretty awesome experience so it's good to hear that and again everybody has you know that's why everyone loves Nick Patty and again you know everyone will thank you guys Nick Patty just. It, it's it's hard to find a school where you know on the outside looking in, there's a lot of schools out there that, that that don't have that culture. You know, you guys clearly have the culture that that, that family means something. It's not just something that you throw on a wall that you say you, you know that's it's who you guys are. When, when when recruits come in and I talk to them, they talk about what it's like. And it was cool to hear you know like for instance like Derek Davis when he talked about coming back. It's a family here. They got talent here. I've never seen Pitt have this much talent. Filter COVID talking about, you know, I, you know, you know, maybe I made a mistake, you know, going didn't doing what I did at first. They got talent here. It's been great to come back home and how they've embraced me. Isaiah Polk, one of the things he talked about is just, you know, it was just home. And you hear that work constantly from you guys. And, you know, I think that's just something special that you guys have developed. And it's, you know, talk about, you know, it's the it's the coaches, but it's really you guys, you know, you guys, are, you know, the, the coaches can talk about whatever the hell they want when on the recruiting trail. You guys are the ones that truly not just sell it, but show it. And I think that's why Pitt fans are so happy that they, we, you know, we're lucky to have guys like yourself on the roster that truly care about being at Pitt. So it leads me to my last two questions. And these are the fun questions. And the first one, what was your favorite moment? so far in your career here at Pitt. And if you have, you can't name one, you can always name a couple. It doesn't matter, but talk about what are, what's your number one or possibly your top two favorite moments at the university of Pittsburgh. Um, on the field, uh, my favorite moment has to be, um, the NDAC championship game, 
Uh, I was lucky enough to be the center at that time, and I got to uh, at that last QB kneel. I got to snap the the final college snap to Kenny Pickett, mm-hmm. and uh, just seeing that confetti come down, and it was honestly, <laughs> honestly, man, I had no idea what was going on. I I couldn't even process what was going on. It was like a surreal feeling. I don't think it hit me for a week after that. That's that's you know what we had because, like I said, it almost seemed unimaginable to that moment. So on the field, absolutely spending that time, taking the photos with the trophy with my brothers, uh, that was definitely the most memorable and exciting pit moment on the field that I've had, um, you know, since since I've been here. And off the field, I can't pin it down to one. But honestly, we uh, and the Hogs always have cookouts and stuff. And honestly, like that's some of the best times I've had when I was here. I mean, we're able to get everyone out there. And like that's the type of moments like outside of, you know, football, they really grow those relationships. So there wasn't one specific off the field moment, but definitely just like, you know, grilling in someone's backyard somewhere, just like hanging out, like whether that be in the off season or during the summer, you know, whatever. But uh, those memories and like the locker room memories are, you know, the two most, the two moments I'll take for the rest of my life and always remember. And the last one, if you could name, and again, you can always name a couple. Because you guys, you know, obviously we know Akershire Stadium is the greatest stadium you've played in. Okay. Talk about, if you can name, you name a couple, it, it doesn't matter to me because it's always special, especially in the Power Five. Talk about the best or the, the the top three best visiting stadiums that you've ever played at. Um, I mean... Playing down in Tennessee was unbelievable, man. I, I knew that one was coming up. I knew it was coming. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the noise, holy man, that was wild. I mean, the, the cadence, the sound of cadence we had to go on, that was that was really wild because I guess like, you know, not a ton of the ACC stadiums have that many seats in their in, in their stadium. <laughs> a lot of them <laughs> cities have smaller fan bases sometimes, like Pitt, small turnout. Mm-hmm. Man, oh my gosh, that was I don't even know if I'd want to play their home all the time because it's so loud. Like, you know what I mean? Like they're, they're loud when their offense is out there. I don't know, their offense has got to go in silent. But so that's one. Uh, number two was my second start away uh, at Death Valley in Clemson. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was during COVID, and uh, they had like a half capacity or quarter capacity rate, and I still think they had no less than five thousand seats unfilled. Like they had. The- <laughs> <laughs> So that was absolutely electric. And they didn't play the week before, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, because one of the teams, Florida State or Miami or something, opted out of a game because of Mm -hmm. COVID. And they were just – they were rowdy, man. They missed their football that week. So (laughs) Uh, that's that's definitely two. Um, And, um, I mean, Virginia Tech's pretty electric as well. So that's that's probably going to be my number three. I mean, getting to watch Enter Man was – it's a pretty awesome feat. Uh, I would, I'm probably, you know, that list probably gets shuffled up this year because this year I get to play down at Dub V and I get to play at uh, Notre Dame. So, yeah, hopefully those are, I'm really looking forward to playing down there in those two games. So, uh, but those are my top three right now. Um, yeah, man, those are, those are all pretty electric environments. I got to admit, those are, those are three damn good ones, especially I've had friends that have gone to all those stadiums and they talk about it. And it's cool to hear when people come here and they hear, you know, Thunderstruck come on and, you know, when ACDC starts cranking and everyone, and especially the Panther pit, when they start banging the seats, you know, but it's so cool that you get to go to those stadiums, you know, Tennessee, and then you win down there. You know yeah, what I mean? It's like, sure. you know, you win there and you silence that crowd. You know, you go to Virginia Tech, they, you know, enter Sandman. Well, they were just as good as exit Sandman because you beat them <laughs> down there too, you know, you know, and then, you know, it, it's just, it's it's a special moment when you're able to go to those stadiums and really embrace it, and especially it's got to be feel even better when you beat those teams, you know, in those stadiums where they think, you know, hey, you know, we're the, you know, the we're the you know the twelfth man, you know, like Texas A&M, they're the twelfth man that's it's so loud there, and I think you know one of the one of the biggest things when we talk about stadiums, the West Virginia game, you know, I, when I was watching those guys, you know, West Virginia had nine false starts that game. I don't know if you know that. Okay, I did not. Nine false starts. Okay, because, I mean, I can tell you this. That's probably the first pit game. And I went to, you know, the Penn State games that were here as well. 
that was probably the first game that I think that I literally couldn't talk to the person next to me because that's how loud it was when West Virginia was on the field. So it's got to be special, for, especially for you guys when you're down there. And, you know, one, again, to wrap up here, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your schedule. And, you know, I'm going to release this. And Pitt fans, please do the same thing as you did to Jake. Please thank Blake for taking time out of his night. You know, it's, it's, you know, we started this at seven o'clock, you know, it's seven forty-five now. He's, he's blessed me with 45 minutes of questions. Okay. I know he's busy. So please reach out to Blake and Blake, if you could tell people where they can find you, they can follow you, especially for your season coming up. Now talk about, you know, Twitter, Instagram, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me at Twitter, uh, Blake underscore Zabovic 66 and, uh, on Instagram, just Blake underscore Zabovic. Uh, those are my two main platforms right now I'm using. So. And that's perfect. And again, Pitt fans below, especially on the banner going across, you'll see the Twitter account, Blake underscore Zubovic 66. You can follow him there. Uh, again, thank you guys for everything that you guys do to support the channel and how fast we're growing here. Um, this is something I've been wanting to do for a while and people have talked to me about it. I love celebrating our hometown guys, um, but I, it's not possible without you Pitt fans. So please subscribe. Please like the video. Reach out to Blake. Follow him. Uh, especially for anything with business inquiries, anything like that, reach out to him about that. Um, again, Blake, thank you so much. Thank you to the Pit fans, as always. And as always, thank you for another episode of Talking College Football with J.J. Kitchen. And as always and forever, always, hell to Pit. Hell to we'll pit. see you guys around. <laughs>